welcome to the video lecture for The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. So, immediately, by which I mean in paragraph one, we are told that Jimmy Cross carries Martha's love letters. So always pay much attention to the introductory portion of a short story. It's very likely the author is setting up some important points that are going to be fleshed out as the story evolves. In the second paragraph, it functions, for the most part, much like a list because there's so much emphasis that's placed on any individual's Id any individual item's weight and how carefully it has to be packed, for example. Um, everything is treated with care because carelessness equals loss, perhaps even loss of life. Uh, we can ask ourselves, is loss a recurring theme? Um, can loss be a thing that they carry? So just think about the title, The Things They Carry. So consider the types of things that the characters carry in terms of two categories, intangible things and tangible things. Tangible things are backpacks, uh, guns, ammo, other types of physical objects. Intangible things could be emotions like fear, guilt, uh, military training, that, that could be an intangible. Um, Kiawa is a good example of, of both. Uh, he carries distrust and he carries a copy of the New Testament. Um, so the story already makes a connection to religion. So uh, distrust, an intangible item, a copy of the New Testament, it's a physical object, um, so that's, uh, that's um, a tangible item. Um, and given the connection to religion with the New Testament, it may not be a stretch then to see the same connection to religion in Jimmy Cross. Let's look at characters' names. I mean, Jimmy is short for James, which is definitely a biblical name. And the religious connection to Cross, well, I mean, that's very apparent. Um, twice in this paragraph, the narrator makes reference to Ted Lavender being shot. But from inside, whose consciousness, consciousness is the narrator, uh, if anyone? Let's move to paragraph 5. Here and in other paragraphs, we return to long lists of items. And really, as a reader, this can become a bit mind-numbing. Uh, why all of this information? Is it that the mind-numbing nature of the list uh, re reflect the daily grind and uselessness of, of war, which is also mind-numbing? At paragraph 11, Ted Lavender is dead. To what degree does Jimmy Cross carry some sort of pain over this? and why. Uh, maybe Cross carries the weight of Lavender's death because if he was not busy thinking of Martha, he could have done something to save Lavender. Cross is in need of redemption. Uh, this is ironic because he's a character whose names are biblical. After Cross confesses his guilt over uh, the death of Lavender, the very next paragraph uh, takes us back to the list mode. So. Why is this? A confession of guilt? Well, we're back to a, a list of things they carried. Are, are the list, uh, or the things they carry, uh, do they function as an escape, a, a connection back to the reality they left behind before going to war? Uh, maybe he can't deal with the guilt, so we're right back to the reality of those uh, tangible items uh, that they carry. So we can also ask how is it that soldiers carry such terrible weapons of destruction and not go insane I is it in part because there is safety in the fact that they carry all of these things maybe if we go to paragraph 12 cross carries with him a pebble from martha martha is also a biblical name and sometimes he carries the pebble in his mouth uh, this is during april when easter occurs is the pebble like a substitute Eucharist? Now, if you're not familiar um, in Catholicism with the Catholic liturgy of the Eucharist, it occurs during a Catholic Mass. Worshippers receive the body and the blood of Christ in a very literal, uh, literal sense. The body of Christ is delivered into the worshippers' mouths uh, in the form of what most would describe as a thin wafer that, that quickly resolves. Uh, upon receiving the body of Christ, Worshippers are then redeemed of their sins. So consider the following here. Cross needs to achieve redemption. He carries the pebble in his mouth, much like Catholic worshippers receive the body of Christ. A pebble 
though, is an inanimate object. So if one attempts to use it as a Eucharist, it would be a false Eucharist. It's not the body of Christ. It's a rock. It's a rather uh, pagan sort of version of a Eucharist. So Jimmy Cross continues to carry the pebble in his mouth, the guilt over the death of Lavender, and he can't receive, or achieve, I should say, a state of redemption because the Eucharist is false. Uh, is all of this a metaphor for other aspects of Cross's life? Uh, consider the name Martha. It's a biblical name. In the Bible, Martha was Lazarus' sister. Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, but Lazarus would not give up the material world to follow Christ. Um, most of uh, the paragraph 18, paragraph 18, is written in the third person point of view, but then there's this shift to second person through the use of many second person pronouns. Why might O'Brien, the author of this story, choose to shift the narratological point of view so abruptly, and what effect might it have? At paragraph 21, Cross recalls that Martha did not kiss him back. Is she really committed to him? At paragraph 22, uh, no explanation can be offered regarding what the moral would be for a young boy's death. Actually, the very meaning of the word moral is unknown to, it seems, everyone but Henry Dobbins. So maybe this reflects the fact that how can the experience of war even have a moral? Will humanity just repeat this behavior because we cannot learn from it? If we move to paragraph 39, Easter is mentioned, but not in a religious context. It's simply made reference to in terms of a commodity into what one can get, Easter eggs. Uh, again, we have the theme of redemption unachieved. Uh, paragraph 40, Cross is trembling while digging a foxhole. He carries guilt. What is he trying to bury? And, and here I mean that in a figurative sense. Is he successful to any degree? Uh, paragraph 77, so I'm making a jump here. This list is different. There's emotional baggage here to be carried, isn't there? And finally, if we move to paragraph 81, Cross burns Martha's letters, and uh, the, the two photographs are buried too. Interestingly enough, there's a light rain falling. Now, in literature, any time there's rain or water in any form, we should consider it as a symbol for life, uh, a cleansing, birth, or maybe even rebirth. In a religious sense, it could also serve as a metaphor for the act of baptism. Does any of this suggest that Cross has arrived at a new stage in his life, that he has achieved uh, redemption or perhaps some state of, of peace uh, or acceptance within the self? Well, I hope you enjoyed the lecture on um, Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. Thank you.